this is a rather unusual video. I'm combining my final review of two dramas I've talked about previously into this one video. Hello, you're watching Avenue X, where junkie on good storytelling shares her thoughts, knowledge, and occasional weird ideas on stories and how they're told. With the Babylon Lian Dear Diary, and 只是结婚的关系 Once we get married, have both finished airing. If you've watched my first impression videos of both dramas, you know I have really good impression of both of them, and it kind of maintained my first impression all the way through till the end. I think it makes more sense, time-wise and energy-wise, everything to put both dramas final review in one video. So today, first I'll talk about Dear Diary, and then once we get married, for Dear Diary with Babi Lun Lian Ren, I'll still put it at the two goat mine. I don't think it has performed exceeding my expectation to the point that it deserves a three goat mine, but it will be a high two goat mine. It's like two point five or something. Really, really good. I'll put two links in the description box of the video、uh, on Billy Billy. Done by content creators in China that are interviews from those content creators to the、uh, main creatives of what the Babylon Lian Ren. If you're interested in finding out more details about、um, what they went through, how the whole thing came to be, and what is their idea behind making it, although they are in fully Chinese with Chinese subtitles, so if you can't watch it now, maybe not so far down. The lie in the future when translating AI got so clever that we can solve it like easily. Now, getting back to the drama itself, I'll first talk about things that prevented me from rating it even higher, and then the good things. If you watch through the entirety of the drama, you probably noticed towards the end of it, it does start to slip a little bit, particularly in the last two episodes when our main leads group, as a group, is confronting the.、Uh, Ultimate bad guy. It started to get a little bit funny. <laughs> I couldn't quite hundred percent believe in the story because parts of it got literally just too dramatic. Partially due to the set design of the Wu Mountain, that definitely looks like a set for sure. Zhou Yu's character Duan Shuliu falling off the cliff. That entire sequence of how it got to that point and why things happen the way it is feels a little bit too forced. Broke the pace of the story and made me just not quite wanting to believe in it. I can accept pretty much everything else of the last two episodes, although I do have to say, Ouyang Wenshan in ancient Babylonian time walked his way because back then there was no flight <laughs> all the way from ancient Iraq to China and then dug a hole and buried something in there. And how? Can you make sure that later, thousands of years later, a Chinese person is gonna find it and it's gonna be the person that you want? You know, like how how does that make sense? And why does the、uh, uncle of Bu Guanjing's character knows about that? Oh yeah, Wen Shan. His most incredible superpower apparently is not having the most amount of money、uh, that come out of nowhere. His superpower is. Biological GPS that can guide him walking all the way <laughs> from ancient Iraq to China. I don't know, and then walk back. <laughs> okay, go back to his job of supporting his kin. Oh my god! So these little things here and there are not perfect. If it could be polished to the point where all of those problems got erased and evened out. This probably would be a three goat mine drama for me. So to talk about the great things about this drama, first. On the very superficial level, I love the title sequence and the ending song. Okay, there are a couple of songs, and they use it for different mood at the end of each episode. I mean, the drama gets edited to the final length that we have, but honestly, it's probably a much shorter drama because each episode is rather short, and then they replay a quite significant chunk of previous episode, and then they cut into the music, and then go back to the、uh, official of the. New episode. So first five minutes, pretty much of each episode, doesn't provide you any new information. Usually, I'll get really, really pissed by this kind of design. But I have to say, because of how beautiful the title music and its graphics and its design is done, I was okay with the fact that I have to waste five minutes at the beginning of each episode. The second thing I really appreciate about it is. I'm happy about the ending not forcing 
a super cliche happy ending. In a way, it is a happy ending, but it's like halfway happy ending because it is no longer who we want. You know, the three pairs, the original people together being together. The two main male characters did travel back to time and then couldn't come back anymore. So our contemporary female lead and her friend basically. Lost who they really loved and never gonna meet them again. But they both ended up with a token that is designed and specifically given to them that only they know that it really did happen. And then at the last bit, when both female characters did end up meeting, almost a version of doppelganger of their you know like fantastical love story. In real contemporary time, is also rather well done because it doesn't emphasize on that these two guys now having a contemporary life as a really a new person. Maybe they're in reincarnation. Really, like I think that's what they aimed at. But neither of them really have any idea about what happened, you know, before, and they definitely do not understand why these two girls react in that kind of way to them. And then it's very masterfully ending it. At the、uh, Bu Guanjin scene on the television of the bad guy, also has a version in contemporary time and just a, almost a harmless old guy who is attending a variety show, singing a Chinese song as a foreigner, and then she starts to laugh. I think it's a really well designed last scene of this fantastical story. It does cut back. That impact and kind of suggesting to the audiences is don't take this too seriously. The entire story and fantasy is in a way rather ridiculous. But then through the actress's acting, like she's really good at laughing and crying at the same moment and watching that variety show with the two doppelganger guys in the same room who are totally. Unaware of why she acts like that, that also shows、uh, half of that is real, at least, or her experience is real. And us as audiences who have gone through the entire journey with her knows it's real for her. But to the rest of the world outside of this immediate sort of group, that is the characters and audiences, it is ridiculous. And I think it's so interesting that they pick that shot and that kind of moment as the ending. I would hate to actually have a super happy ending of like they reincarnated and they remember what happened and they came back to their love.、Mm, no, 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 no. That would actually be so cheap. The current version, although I don't think they're gonna make a second season of this thing, a new story starts now. There's a new chapter behind it. It may work out between these characters. It may not. It has that laid back. Attitude towards the let's say the ridiculous nature of existence. The third thing, definitely the actors. I so appreciate the entire、uh, casting of everybody. Ideally, I would have、uh, all of them using their original, real voice. It's a minor thing compared to just how much dedication I can see every actor has put into making their roles come to life. This is such a hard script to perform. There are extremely emotional, touching, kind of digging at the deepest wound and your sort of pain as a human being moments. There are also just high, ridiculous comedy part. If you can 100% give up yourself as an actor or actress, you just can't do it. Among all the Chinese dramas I've watched up to this point, 2021, <laughs> this is the drama that really tests to the ultimate. Limit of the professionalism of actors. How can you be so serious and so trusting in your role when actually everything else is showing you it's totally, utterly ridiculous? Then the fourth thing at the core of the story, the most important thing is this is not just cheesy romantic comedy. This is a rather ambitious work. And it's just been buried under the pretenses of the shells of all those ridiculous scenarios and fantasy. That really important message, and I think it applies to pretty much everybody living a contemporary life, is how do you make peace with your past? Everybody has their past, and a lot of people have things in their past that they don't want to face, or that has significantly changed them, or impacted them, or hurt them, made them who they are. A person who can fully, hundred percent, without any problem, accepting who they are and their history, live in a way that is totally different. Even appearance-wise, other people may not see it, but you know deeply in your heart 
if you can completely accept yourself, the kind of life you're living as compared to you are always at odds with your own history and there's things you don't want to face about yourself. These are two totally different ways of existing. And the story talks about that at the core of it. For the main female role, she represents mass population, each and every one of us. And Dear Diary is her story to make peace with that, to discover herself, to arrive at the point that she can live with herself and her own history and fully accept herself as who she is. And it is not easy for visual production to deliver that message in such an effective, interesting, engaging, keep you on your seat and laughing through, but then also getting so touched at the moments that you need to be touched. Wait, like this entire project did that so successfully. And that's why I say this is a super ambitious project and it's much more than meet the eye. And I'm so happy that most of the audiences who have gone and watched through this drama got it. Right, we probably all got it. We appreciate that very, very much. Then let's move on to talk about once we get married. <laughs> Why am I laughing already? This drama, okay, I've watched the entire 24 episodes and I'll give it to Goat Mai as well. This is definitely inflated because the quality of the drama does not really deserve a two Goat Mai, but because I just have almost completely positive response to this drama. While logically, rationally, I know it is not the greatest drama ever at all. Still, I am so entertained by it. This is my channel. I'll, I'll, I'll just do whatever I like. It pretty much stayed all the way through as I expected it would be, which is it's a typical cheaply produced contemporary romantic drama that is about the very old setup of contractual marriage between a CEO and a lesser well-doing girl filled with the <laughs> moments that you can expect will happen, did happen type of thing. If I have to pick out a couple of things, right, I hope it could do a little bit better. First is I still hoped they used their own voice. I don't understand why it has to be like contemporary drama getting dubbed, particularly for the female lead actress Wang Yuwen due to Chao Shiyu just did too much dubbing for Didi Rova before, it was much harder for me to get into her role. Second thing is I hoped the uh, female anti-hero person, you know, I don't even think she's the female second, like who is the female second of this drama, you can't really quite tell. I just hoped her character can got written more three-dimensional. She's so two-dimensional and so typical the bad person. Right before the last sort of thing, she's still trying to sabotage the main relationship, got to the point where it was a little bit too tired and stupid. So these are a couple of things that I hoped they could do better, but overall it doesn't really affect my enjoyment of this drama. I think this drama got to me so much is because it really casted the right people to play these two roles. Even if this entirety of the drama <laughs> okay, took place in their bedroom, if their drama only has one set and it's their daily banterings and then da daily sprinkle of sugar and those ridiculous tropey camera <laughs> style showing you the tropey moments, I'd be happy to watch it. Wang Yuwen and Wang Ziqi, they both liao tickle each other in a such perfect way that, that like you feel like you're the grandmother in the drama. Her just sitting there and just like watching it was this this interest. <laughs> watching two perfectly made for each other people. All the dog food and the sugar flying in the air and all the pink bubbles and you're like <laughs> that is so sweet. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Towards the very end of the drama, if you look at all the live comments, it's so funny. Every comment, literally entire screen of it is like, where is your kid? <laughs> Why isn't she pregnant yet? <laughs> Come on, go and give birth to your children. Everyone is just like grandmother and mother for these two rows. We have completely taken the position of that angle and just like, Come on, <laughs> you two. We expect a string of kids running after you at this point now. If you have watched the very end of the drama, you know there's this one plot of um, their contractual marriage got exposed and then that causes the guy's company stock to plummet and then the uh, investors got really angry. And one of those guys who lost their money at the stock market and got a knife and trying to hurt the female lead and then our male lead and his um, assistant, which is also a very good looking guy by the way, 
just showed up out of nowhere. Like two guys walking, slow-mo, like so goblin moment, but it's so poorly filmed with the lighting camera. It's just nowhere close to the original version. And it's so funny is they don't even show how the bad guy got tackled. First shot, the two guys are walking. Next shot, the girl gets saved. It's a rather tight shot of our male lead comes in and help her and talk to her. And it still doesn't show what happened to the bad guy. And you don't hear any commotion noise. You don't see anything. The next shot to cut to the assistant, the bad guy is already out <laughs> and he's over the shoulder like a garbage bag and the system was like goodbye okay i'm gonna take care of this guy i'm gonna go away <laughs> and um it's all done it's like we don't have time to choreograph this we don't have time to film the proper shot we haven't designed it at all we just want to show you you know she's in danger he comes to the rescue done it's worse than school play in terms of the presentation of that sequence yet even at that point, I only laughed at like, I know this is what you're trying to do and you just don't have the budget and whatever reason to do it properly. I forgive you, move on, <laughs> okay, move on. It's actually really ridiculous to watch that and see that you react that way. And then you read live comments, pretty much all the audiences who are typing out those live comments have the exact same reaction, which is <laughs> this is so bad so tall so copying goblin and so just like not doing it even properly at all but we do not care okay we see it now we forgive you move on it is a rare thing for a drama to have so many <laughs> shortcomings and so clearly not well produced like every time they're traveling to italy you can tell it's filmed in china because they don't have the budget to do that it's all interior it's just some kind of like general western style rooms and architecture and it's so not in italy but because of these two actors really they're so perfect for their role and they're mm, those sugars when they first got together which is rather late in the drama i think around episode 17 or 18 that's when they first officially become husband and wife i was so like their grandmother and every other drama reviewers who are watching happen to be watching this drama that i noticed how they react to that part exactly like me they were like finally you two are ah ah Oh. It got me physically, emotionally, hormonally <laughs> to react to it exactly to probably their design and their expectation. Therefore, it is really a successful drama, in my opinion. I have seen quite a few drama reviewers just um, pretty much treating it as a crappy drama, like every other crappy drama that we have seen this year. I have the feeling they probably haven't really watched too many episodes. They just opened it and watched the first one or two and was like, ah, this is another crappy drama. It's sad, you know, <laughs> missed opportunities. But I'm just happy that I managed to stick through the first couple of episodes to discover. <laughs> this is 2021 Avenue X's accidental stumbled upon sugar mine. I had such a good time. I had so many <laughs> laughing out loud moments. I had so many stomping on the floor, hitting my desk, and shrieking like goose <laughs> movements. You know, when you laugh to the point where you can't breathe and you're like, ah, 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 ah. I have no complaint about this. Okay, I don't care what other people say. This is a good drama for me and I'm so happy I discovered it. And I have to say it once, <laughs> she is so good at tickling. Leo, okay, I have no idea he's that good due to the, the, the rather stern period character he has in the Imperial Coroner. If he is in any way like his character in this drama in real life when he is dealing with girls, there's no hope for the female sex <laughs> when they encounter him. That will be the end of this combined final review of the drama Dear Diary. And once we get married, Two dramas that made me happy in very different ways, but highly appreciative of their existence. Thank you for watching Avenue X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.